In tonight's reading, we'll see that church really is a life or a death matter. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Thursday, the 5th of May, or actually we are um, post-recording, um, recording after the fact, the readings from the week of, of uh, excuse me, not May 5th, uh, Thursday, May 5th, it's Thursday, May 11th, but for, uh, ignore that, please. Uh, Thursday, May 11th, we, we're going back to, re, uh, to record the readings that we missed the week of May 8th through May 12th, uh, and that includes Thursday, May 11th, of course, uh, and that would have been week 19, day 4 of reading through the New Testament in 2023, and that brings us to Acts chapter 5, which is uh, what I intended to write, or to type on, the, on that intro screen. Um, but we are here in this in this section. We're early early in the book of Acts, and we're seeing the the young church as we know it. Again, the church goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. But the church as we know it had its birthday on Pentecost, and we're seeing it kind of begin to take shape. And uh, we're seeing the beginning of their life together as God's people here. And and it takes a uh, really quite a shocking turn here in Acts chapter 5. So let's turn to our text. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds, and brought only a part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? to lie to the Holy Spirit, and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever believers were added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. People also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out, and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, We found the prison 
securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. Thus far, Acts chapter 5. So we see from the example of Ananias and Sapphira that they were not just playing around as they gathered. That what they were doing in their life together was really a matter of life and death. And that's shown not just by the deaths of Ananias and Sapphira, but also the fact that Peter and James and and the others were putting their lives on the line by preaching the gospel. These things really are matters of life and death. Both in terms of the church's relationship with the people around them, and also within the church as well. But notice something. This power to kill, this life and death thing that we see in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, It is never used as a weapon, never used as a club by the apostles to enforce their will. They had no desire to rule by fear. That simply was not what they were about. And so this is a reminder, and Ananias and Sapphira, this is a reminder that what the church does and what we do still today as the church is a matter of life and death. 
And that should lead us to come prepared with our hearts full of repentance and faith. But not coming in fear, but rather coming because you know that here, within Christ's church, life really is dispensed. This power over death that we see in the case of Ananias and Sapphira should also point you to the fact that real life is dispensed as well. In fact, that is the true task of the church, to give out the forgiveness of sins that brings about eternal life and salvation. For where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also eternal life and salvation. So this episode with Ananias and Sapphira should lead us to think carefully about what it is that we do, what we are, what we gather for, but not to lead us to fear, rather to bring us joy at the testimony of what Christ continues to dispense through his church. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's Word in prayer, uh, or as in this case, as we go back and, and fill in one of the missed readings from that week. Uh, but God willing, we will see you Monday through Fridays, 7 p.m., right back here uh, as we end our days. Uh, in the meantime, God's blessings on your night.